This morning, I bring you 12 words that can revolutionize your life. Listen to them. Study them. Believe them. Let them sink into your unconscious that they may dominate your thinking and you will profit immeasurably by the magic of believing. And these are the 12 words that are packed with power. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. The if in this powerful statement is whether you will permit yourself to have the drive and the penetration of mind to go deeply into the essence of power that is offered in these words. If thou canst conquer the struggle to believe, then all things become possible to him that believeth. Now you may say, intellectually and academically, I will accept that statement because it comes from the most reliable book ever written, the Holy Bible. But let's face it, this generation has been subjected to much soft preaching. There have not been too many ministers who realize the power and the glory and the force of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Therefore, they have, uh, not wittingly, but unwittingly, watered it down so that many people sitting in this congregation today, I well know, would not have the depth and ruggedness of faith to say, I know that's true, and rest their whole life upon it. But you can rest your whole life upon it. It won't give. It has power under it. In my mail, I receive many letters from people who have believed and against great odds and difficulties have overcome. I hold here in my hand a letter from Allahabad, India. I hope you will pardon the personal references he makes to my sermons. I could eliminate this, but uh, it holds together better uh, to read it as it is written. I am writing you for the first time to express my appreciation for an article of yours that appeared in the Reader's Digest entitled, There is Life After Death. This is not the first time that I have admired your writings, but ever since I was a small boy in my high school classes, I have lived on your sermons. And they have influenced my life in bringing me close to Jesus and finally knowing him and accepting him as my personal savior. Not only in school days, but also during the long period of six years that I was confined to bed in hospitals, those sermons have been a great value to me in giving me faith and helping me to believe. To write you very briefly, I was doing my BA final in Lucknow University when I fell ill just before my examinations. I was allowed to answer my papers in the hospital, which I did in extreme pain and suffering. I had pain in the joints of my limbs. My condition grew worse to the extent that I moved from one hospital to another and went through 14 major surgical operations, resulting in the amputation of my left arm and my left leg. Then I had two abdominal operations in order to make artificial passage to my stomach. In going through these operations, I touched all possible depths of physical agony and human suffering. Lastly, I had a severe attack of pulmonary tuberculosis in the days when such a disease was equivalent to a death pronouncement on its victim. But, but, 
the power of God abounded in my life so that when human grief and sorrow exceeded all possible limits, his healing grace was even more abundant. I was declared physically unfit for any form of employment whatsoever. But, there it is again, I was determined to live the life that was granted to me through the grace of God. So after a long gap of eight years in my studies, I resumed my studies at the postgraduate level in mathematics, disregarding the death warning by my doctors and even disregarding the glaring fact of having forgotten every word of mathematics up to the graduate level. With strong faith in God, together with firm determination and hard work, I received my master's degree in mathematics, having completed the requisite course creditably within the prescribed period of two years, and I was appointed as lecturer in mathematics immediately after passing my final examination. It is a long story full of rich Christian experience and adventurous living through his grace. I married and I have four children and I would like to share with you the great joy of that confident faith that I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. You know, friends, the world has such an insipid idea of what Christianity actually is. It is for men, strong people, not strong within themselves, but strong in their power to believe. If this is rugged, if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believeth there is offered to you and to me the magic of believing now actually I don't like that word magic too well it's subject to attack there's nothing uh, hocus-pocus about this. The word magic is a synonym in this usage for the word wonder. You might call it the wonder of believing. And how is this wonder of believing applied? First, as I've indicated, it is to depend upon the power inherent in the grace of God. Second, Surround every circumstance or situation or condition in your life that has unpropitious elements in it with positive and creative thought. It is a law of psychology that there is a deep tendency in human nature to become like that which we habitually think or imagine ourselves to be. Uh, imagination might be applied imaging. What we picture, we tend to become. We, in the long run, draw to ourselves that which we deeply think. And you can draw negative results to yourself by thinking in that terminology and many people do but you can draw to yourself creative wonderful things of achievement if you learn to believe so that you send out creative and positive thoughts that activate the universe around you positively the people who do this are not superficial Pollyanna people in any sense of the word. 
they have to fight and struggle for this kind of faith. But if you get it, then you have the magic of believing. For example, one of my friends over many years, a person whom I have, for whom I've had a great affection, is Dr. Roy Burkhardt of Columbus, Ohio. His ministry, one of the most outstanding that this country's seen in recent years. Roy has this power, this magic of believing to a very high degree. He wrote me a letter and said that he wanted to have a meeting in Columbus, his city, that would really reach people and that would stimulate the power of the gospel in the Ohio capital. And he planned this meeting carefully with much prayer. Asked me to come and give a talk. I was humbled to do so. I arrived in Columbus about 2.30 in the afternoon at the airport in one of the most elemental, enormous rainstorms I've ever experienced. And I've been through quite a few of them, as have you. The elements had opened themselves up and they were given Columbus all they had dark, rolling clouds and sheets of water that were driven by the wind like an advancing curtain of rain and everywhere flooded condition. And Roy greeted me at the airport door with a smile and he said, the hall is full. Now I knew what all he had. It seats 4,000 people. I said, now, Roy, what do you mean the hall's full? He said just what I said, the hall is full. And he said, people are being helped, and the power of God is present. Then I knew what he meant. The hall wasn't actually full. It was full in his thoughts. He saw it as full, not because we were interested in a full house, but because the more people we had there, the more people God could help through this meeting. He had created it in advance, in essence, and it is a fact. If you create something in your mind, it is already in existence if your faith undergirds it with power and with work. It rained all afternoon. It was still raining and blowing when we went into the hall at a quarter of eight. Every seat was filled. People were standing. And in all of my experience, I remember this as a meeting that topped many others because of the spirit of the place that defied the elements. And lives were changed. I'll never forget this man with a light on his face. The hall is full. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Now, you take any situation you have to face. You're a businessman. You're a wife. You're a husband. You're a student. And your difficulties are here in front of you. Now, uh, don't let your difficulties talk to you and say, we're formidable, you can't overcome us, we are tremendous, we are mighty, you are defeated. You can talk yourself into that and you can be just as defeated as anybody. You say, yes, I see you, but I see Jesus too. I'm a practicer of the magic of believing. If thou canst believe, there's no limit to what you can achieve. Now, this is not my idea. It's out of the gospel, but I believe it. And I've seen it demonstrated so many times that that's why I'm preaching about it today. Life can't defeat you if you practice the magic of believing. I've seen this happen in so many different lines of, uh, of activity that I hardly know which illustration to select beyond and above another. 
but for some reason or other I'm thinking of a man who came here a few years back. It was during a depression, and he was a southerner, and he had a kind of a hail fellow well met uh, way about him. And he said to me, uh, <clears throat> I'm in the furniture business, and I've gone and bought myself a big, a big uh, inventory. And he says, uh, we're in a little depression now, and besides, in my section of the country, there's been a crop failure, a very prominent crop, and there isn't much money in our community. And I don't know whether I can turn this inventory over. So I've come up here to New York to ask you how to turn over this furniture inventory. And I said, no, no, my friend, do you know who I am? I said, I'm a preacher. I'm not in the sales uh, mercantile business. You better go someplace else. Why come and ask me how to turn over an inventory of furniture? He said, I read your things, and you say that Christianity applies to everything, don't you? And I said, yes. Yeah. He says, does it mean everything except the furniture business? I said, no. <laughs> furniture business is in it, too. Well, he said, my problem is how to get money out of people. He said, of course, being a preacher, you never had to deal with that. <laughs> I said, you never raised the church budget, did you? And he, he said he had help. And he said, now, here's the way it is. I'm in my store, and I'm standing there with no customers, and a woman comes up, and she looks through the window at a chair. And I know she wants this chair. I can tell it by the expression on her face. She wants the chair. I want her to buy the chair. And I want her to give me enough money to take the chair out of my store to her house. I want her money. Well, I said, that isn't the right attitude to want her money. I said, the thing you should want is for her to have the chair, not that you fill your pockets full of money. I said, let her have the chair. He said, you mean on credit? I said, yes. Well, he said, if I let them all have it on credit, then I'll have no credit with the supplier because I won't be able to pay him. I said, I'm astonished that you, a businessman, you don't even know the meaning of the word credit. Oh, yes, he says, I do. Well, I said, what is it? And he began an involved explanation of paper and so forth. I said, why don't you go to the dictionary and you'll find out what the word credit means? It comes from the word credo. And credo means I believe. Therefore, your business and, and uh, religion are tied close together. Now, you believe in that woman. You believe that by giving her a chair, you're going to help her and she's going to pay you in little dribs and drabs while you get it. But if you love her enough and believe in her enough to give her a chair, her neighbors will buy chairs and you'll have dribs and drabs coming in from everywhere and you'll keep the exchequer full. And I said, why don't you get in your car and get outside of the store? Don't moon around in the store. Get out among the people and visit them in their homes and look over their furniture and tell them what they need. Most young people start out in life with furniture and they're on credit too. And they want to change these old chairs after a while. It brings new life and vitality to them. He said, how about me hiring you as a furniture salesman? I, <laughs> I said, no, you can do it yourself. I said, and love them and if necessary, pray for them. He was a praying man and great church man. He, he got in touch with me sometime later. He said, I've been having the time of my life. Oh, he said, it's been great. I didn't know people before. And I'm just putting furniture all around the community. And I've even, he says, just about finished the inventory and I think I'll order some more. Why, he said, you can, you can, if you go out to help people, things come your way. He said, for example, I called on one couple and this was a husband and a wife and they opened up to me and told me they were on the outs. And I could see by the way the sparks were flying that they were very angry at each other. And they told me finally that they were they had just about given it up. They were going to get a divorce. And I, they, why, they wouldn't buy any furniture. They told me if they were going to have a divorce. And I said, of course not. But he said, why do you want a divorce? And he began to talk with them. And finally he got them down on their knees. And they prayed it out. And they gave up their hate and irritation and he said it was wonderful when I saw them get up and embrace each other with tears running down their cheeks and they pledged to each other 
lifelong love and fidelity. In fact, he says they were so inspired that I sold them a whole new dining room out there. <laughs> and he said, I went away happy and they went away happy. Ah, you can take a defeat. You can say there's no hope. There's always a new idea available to the man who believes. It's only when you stop believing that ideas stop flowing. The way to keep the flow of ideas coming is to believe in God. Believe in life. Believe in people. Believe in yourself. Believe in the power of Almighty God. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Now, I know I probably run past my time, whatever my time is, but I can't leave this here, really, because as important as what I've said is, and I do believe in it thoroughly, it hasn't got quite the depth to it that I would want to leave with you. Now, the Christian message is that power comes from surrendering yourself to Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now, this word Savior is an old, old word that has lost its punch to many people. Jesus Christ is a Savior. That is to say, if a man is full of fear, he is losing himself. If he goes to Jesus, Jesus takes away his fear and saves him from destruction. If an individual is full of hate and hate is, and he turns to Jesus, Jesus saves him from his hate. He causes this corrosion to cease. The personality readjusts itself and a man lives with new power. If a person is filled with lust or sin in its own unadorned connotations. He needs to be saved. Jesus saves him from it and restores him for life now and life eternal. So the power, the real magic of believing is in the life that is surrendered to Jesus Christ as Savior. In my office, which is on the other side of that wall, is a financial magazine in which there is an article by a friend of mine, one of the most scholarly financial articles that I've ever tried to read. In fact, it's over my head to tell you the truth about it. It's astute. And it deals with a vast range of economics. Common market, cartels, various things. I read this article because I love this fellow who wrote it. And honestly, I'm not super sentimental, but tears came into my eyes when I read it. Not because there's anything in the article to stimulate tears, but that he could do it. For I've seen what he was, and I now see what he is. Among other things, he is chairman of the urban renewal for his state upon appointment by Washington. He's chairman of the cancer drive of his state. He is a very important citizen. <laughs> but a few years ago, he was completely defeated. He was full of conflict. He was living a life that was uh, not at all uh, exemplary, to understate it. He became uh, practically a drunk. He was not practically one, he was one. So much so that his wife left him in despair. His friends deserted him. He lost his position and couldn't get another. His savings evaporated. He was on the bottom. He read uh, books uh, telling him how to think right, how by positive thought you can change yourself. 
And he said, I believe all those things, but I had to have something else. He said, Norman, uh, it didn't work. He said, I even used to go to church drunk. I'm ashamed to say. People avoided me. In this emergency, he says, I went back home. My folks lived on a farm. And I used to go up and tramp through the woods. Just walk and walk and walk, trying to wear myself out. And I got so I put a Bible in my hip pocket instead of a bottle. And I used to sit on a stump and read the Bible. And I came to this passage where it said, If thou canst believe, all things are possible. And I said to myself, Does that mean that I can be changed? All things are possible, he says. But he says the catch is, I can't believe. I'm not strong enough. So he said, I just said to Jesus, Jesus, I want this, but I'm so weak. I can't believe that way. He said, I heard the Lord say to me, don't try so hard. Let me do it for you. This is what they call theologically the grace of God. When you can't do it yourself, God gives you the power. So he says, I, I just got down on my knees by that stump, and I said to the Lord, here I am. I can't do it myself. I'm no count. I'm licked. You do it for me. He said that a great peace came over him. And as the days passed, he became aware of the fact that he was no longer victimized by himself. He was master of himself. He was saved by a savior who taught him the magic of believing. And if there is in his whole section of day a more effective human being than this man, I wouldn't know who he is. So, whatever problem you may have, and it may seem enormous, and you seem very insignificant, remember, you have him, and he compensates for all your weakness and inadequacy. And in him, you grow to be a giant yourself, master of your former weaknesses. If that's the catch, you can believe, and you can believe if you'll try it. And then all things are possible under you. This is the magic or the wonder of believing. Our Heavenly Father, we give thee thanks that in thy inscrutable and subtle wisdom thou didst create this power in the human mind that can overcome destruction and defeat and weakness and lead us into constructive values, strength, and power. This we've called today the magic of believing. But actually it is simply faith in God through Jesus Christ to take hold of our lives, recreate them in power. Grant that it may be so for every person in this great congregation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.